Hello, I'm Matt Doolan, Town Planner, and today I'm going to take you through some basic techniques that we use to design towns and the allotments within them. But I'll also show you how we can expand this idea of town design to create a city. So let's see how we go. Let's start at the village level, which is the basic component. Villages should be approximately 400 metres across or 200 metres radius. That's the comfortable walking distance. Two hundred meters walk then to the town centre. Where basic services can be obtained. Now once you've got a village, residential, town centre commercial, you can then expand this to a city by simply repeating the number of villages but leaving a buffer area between. You don't just let individual villages grow because that's urban sprawl. So now the villages are becoming a city. They then have to be linked by motor vehicle transport and public transport. But uh, motor vehicle transport main roads should not run through the town centres or the residential settlement areas because this will create adverse conditions and poor amenity. We run them on the outside. So the red is the major roads. If you want to travel to see one of your friends in another village, you simply drive through no more than 200 metres of low speed residential street. You then move at 100 kilometres an hour. So residential street, very low, 40, 50 kilometres an hour. And then 100 kilometres an hour to the off ramp and then no more than 200 metres of residential street to visit your friends. Each one of these Villages is separated by a buffer area for environmental, recreation and other purposes. That is your basic city design, city of villages. We'll now look at the more specific design techniques for the individual allotments and areas within the villages. So we'll take a cross section through here and we'll have a look at how we would develop that individual area. Before we do that, we need to determine within that area what the basic parameters, dimensions of the blocks are going to be that we are going to develop. To do that, we need to think about what sort of buildings we're going to put in. If they're just houses, how much backyard, how much front yard, how deep are the houses going to be? Are they going to be shallow plan, deep plan? And what sort of road reserve width do we want? This will give us a basic distance, which is converted into an arrowhead, which then can be laid out using the epidemic technique. So to determine that, we uh, Look at backyard, house, front yard, road. Okay, if we want a 10 metre wide deep backyard, 10 metre deep house, 6 metre front yard, no, let's make that 4, and a 12 metre wide road, so half of that is 6 to the centre point. That gives us an arrow. 30 metres in length. Right, this is mirrored on the other side of the block. 30 metres, giving us a total block width of 60 metres.
So you see that's the typical block with one house facing that street and one house facing this street. Okay, once we've determined that, we can then lay this out on the development site or allotment that we want to subdivide. So remembering that we're looking at a sector of the village centre like that. So the town centre would be up in this area here. That's a road. And in this case, we've got uh, and we've got a commercial area. Here, which is subject to future residential development. And we've got an existing residential estate backing on to the other boundary. So remembering that we determined that our block width would be 60 metres. So this site just happens to be 120 metres, meaning that we'll That's our 30 metres, 30 metres, 60 metre total block width. And we just mark these arrows in. Don't worry too much about where they go or what they align with initially, because the beauty of this technique is the arrows can be changed very easily and quickly. So we need to remember that those arrows mean something. They mean the front of the house faces a certain direction and the back of the house is the back of the arrow, right? We want house fronts to house fronts. We want to overlook good features with our house fronts and we want to back on to more negative features. So in this case here, of course, we wouldn't want to have houses overlooking a not particularly nice commercial area. Uh, industrial type area and we certainly wouldn't want the back of houses sorry the front of houses looking onto people's backyards right. so we need to change those arrows uh, and that can be done quite easily So you'll see as soon as one arrow changes, it causes a cascade of changes. Now, if we had drawn this up in detail, it would have been a complete redraft, but the arrows allow us to change it quickly and easily. Okay, so now we have uh, houses backing onto the commercial area and we have houses backing other house backs to the residential area. Uh, in this example as well, we have um, some protected vegetation and flood prone area constrained in this location. And that was that green space area through here at the edge. So these green space areas and uh, riparian areas are quite positive feature. So we want to um, 
what houses to overlook and front those. Now, once you've got the arrows in place, this will basically tell you uh, where your allotment, your, your blocks, sorry, are going to, to lie. So what we see here is where the arrowheads meet, that's generally where a road is going to go. So you, you can now see that the blocks are starting to form. And the arrows will tell you where you want your houses to face within those blocks. So here, this arrow, here, front facing down onto the green space area, facing away from the residential. So once you have your blocks, you can then start planning for your allotments. You see here where we meet the arrow pointing down, we run these allotments in this direction. Same with these ones. So now you're getting the basic subdivision layout concluded. Um, you then can go and manipulate this to improve some of its aspects. Uh, one technique that we use is large corner blocks and large blocks at the end of T intersections. This enables us to um, make the development appear perhaps with larger allotments than it really has because they are the most visible allotments. So we'll make large light on these corners. Any corner. Large lot. And then at the uh, T intersections, for example, this one here, because traffic will be facing this way as it attempts to exit the estate, this lot here becomes a larger lot. As does this one here. All right, this um, the road connections are then made. So you can see roughly the blue is the is the roadways. Uh, we have an open-ended cul-de-sac here, enabled to to enable access to that allotment. That's the basic hippodermic technique. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions? Let me know.